Hello, guys. Today, I'm going to demonstrate you how to use uh, a saw while doing a knee replacement. Now, knee replacement is a very common uh, operation that we all perform in orthopedics. Um, however, I find that uh, if you don't use the saw to make a bo good bone cuts, then uh, it can lead to adverse outcomes. So today, I have been planning for a long time that I would make a video uh, to demonstrate how I do my saw cuts and what's my uh, rationale behind it. So I will show you. Uh, when I am doing a knee replacement, how do I uh, prepare my tibia and how do I prepare my femur uh, before I cement them for final implantation. I wanted to make this video about correct sawing technique um, for a knee replacement for a long long time and uh, last um, week also I shot this video but unfortunately my mic malfunctioned so hence I am reshooting everything. Now knee replacement is you know involves a lot of cutting bones now if you want to cut bones you need to cut them properly to get a good desired result now the first and foremost three things that you want to do before doing any cut i'm not going to go into how to make the cut because um how much to take because it's already i've uh, uploaded a video for that but three retractors one this protecting the medial collateral ligament this protecting your medical registration because if you cut it, cut the artery, cut the nerve, then you will lose your medical registration. This is protecting the popliteal vessel along with your medical registration. This protecting the lateral structure, usually the lateral collateral ligament. Now you need to see this beautifully, especially if you are doing a posterior stabilizer, you will have this view most times. Now, I am ready to take my cut. Now you can do this in this way or you can do this in the reverse way. Now, most of the cutting in knee replacement is cut reverse because if I do this and if you bend the saw, if you can show it on the side, usually when the bending the saw, it's going to dig into the bone and you are going to take more bone. This way, if at all, if it's going to, due to weight, if at all, it's going to bend like this, then you will take less bone. So, ideally, your saw should be straight and it should be in full power. So, don't do this. This is no way of cutting. Full. Always full strength. That is the first rule of cutting the bone. That it has to be with full speed. So upside down for the tibial cut. Now we start at an angle because you want to go here. Now this is protecting the medial collateral ligament. Now this on this occasion this is quite far. So let's cut the medial side first. Focus here. You want to come out here first. Otherwise, this is going to evolve and then you lose the bone. So, this has to come out first. Now, when you are starting up, one thing is very important that how much deep to go. Now, each saw blade has got a depth. So, it says 10, 20, 30, 40. Put this up and here it says by 60 or 65 you should be able to cut the tibia. Now add from here, from here till your jig. So I should not go more than 70. So if Prashant, you can come here. Come. So this is just on the posterior part of the tibia. The tibia is showing 60. Till this outer jig, it is measuring between 70 to 75. So I would not be going any more deep than 70. Or you can put a mark. This way you will never cut any important structures in the back. So this is one technique when you are starting up and as you gain confidence, you can keep going. So second, so first is at an angle, second is straight, then third again at an angle. Once you have done this, you just take an osteotome and if you have done a good job, it will just lift like this. So this is your tibial cut done. So for tibia, your saw has to be upside down, not straight. So we have done the dis distal for proximal tibia cut. Now we are ready for distal femur. Again, we are not going to get into what we are going to take, but we are ready for our cut. This Rahul Chaudhary is holding a 90 degree. This is two retractor that you need and protecting the lateral structures. This uh, is uh, protecting the MCL and the medial structures, just like that. And once you are ready, then 
again you can do this saw like this or like this if you go like this then there is a very good chance you are going to dig into it so again if you follow me you have to go upside down and then hand resting on the patient and then start from one side again on the full speed again notice i am coming out here first you need to come out here first don't start from inside and go out you will break and you will see a lot of time bone loss so start from outside and if prashant can come from the side now while sawing it is important that you go full speed and you don't bend the blade neither this way neither that way so it it should go nice and straight so if you go straight then you are, you will not hear any resistance otherwise as soon as you angle the voice will change can you see this this is bad this is nice and smooth that's perfect same way we are going to come on the outside the prashant can come from the front again come out here do the outside first this way you will never have this bone loss otherwise you will start from inside you will break and in a small bow in a small you can make use of it so this is our distal femur cut done we have done two cuts now we are moving on to the third cut so again we are ready to we have decided what we are going to size and then again the same thing you can cut like this there is a very good chance you are going to take more bones so again this is upside down upside down hand resting on the patient so did you hear the noise i was doing not a good job so that's why the drr all the time if you are starting up you can actually bend down to make sure see that this blade is straight this has to be straight and once you have done it then if you come here can you see this beautiful grand piano can you so see this beautiful cut nice grand piano and a perfect perfect cut now comes one of the most important cuts this is the posterior cut of the femur now if you see this i have hyperflexed it what it does is it gives me a full exposure and i am able to see it now sawing this you can go down or you can go upside down so this is so far we have gone upside down this is one cut will go straight up like this again hand resting here and hand here and i usually don't go straight if you go straight if you suddenly accidentally dip then you know what is waiting for you what is waiting for you a lawyer a lawyer to screw your happiness so go at an angle just at an angle and then start to see so this is done again same here at an angle slight angle just make sure to take in and out in and out in and out in and out hand here just if you can zoom out just hand here so that i have got full control don't do this you can dip so just hand here then you can control millimeter by millimeter that's it so again now we are cutting the chamfer cuts again this will go upside down for the same reason because if you bend you are going to take more so full speed and listen to the noise of the saw blade mm, nice one smooth rather than grrr, that's bad that means you are struggling your bend your blade is bent and that's the reason it's making that noise now the last cut again upside down that's it sorry this, this is bad once this starts to move that means you have gone the cut now we were struggling slightly at an angle so i have done so many knees still occasionally even an experienced surgeon can struggle so that noise or drrr, it was not good this is better now again some system will have this cut so again straight this is a smaller blade thin blade full speed 
straight up, no angle, just straight up. This was nice, smooth, that's done. So now some system will have notch if you are doing a crochet sacrificing knee, you will have a box cut. So we are ready for the box cut. Now for box cut, you need to appreciate the slope. So there is a slope here. If I can have an osteoderm, see, there is a slope. So this slope will guide you towards your notch. So first is, you know, again, saw has to be facing towards you in this direction. And you want this blade close to this wall. So you want this blade and this kissing each other, then press against each other and then and OP is protecting the tibia. Same here, following the slope. I used to do this way, but this way if you don't have experience, you can go deep. So if you are starting up, this is a good technique. So this is both the walls done. Now we just need to use the smaller blade to complete our saw cut and that will be um, the whole sawing process for the system that I use. I am on the top, upside down, upside down. So straight up along the slope. So this is our cut done. So this is the end result and you can see the cut is uh, Perfect. So this is my way of doing um, sawing of the knee replacement. It's not because I do it this way and this is, uh, that's why you should do it. This is because I have been um, observing various good surgeons all across the world. And then eventually I came at, and made my this practice that you should use the saw in this particular way. So this is how I do it and this is uh, what I expect you to do if you follow me. So this was a demonstration on how I use my saw while doing a knee replacement. Now, I, I, this is what I do it and I have my uh, rationale of why I do it. So uh, the key is that you should use the saw in full speed and also make sure that your blade doesn't bend. And I have already stressed upon the direction of uh, um, a saw uh, uh, when and doing different type of uh, cuts. Also, placement of retractors and appreciating that how deep you want to take the saw especially when you are doing the posterior uh, femur cut or the tibial cut so as to avoid any catastrophic events. So I hope you find this video useful. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up. Please do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.